Welcome to the latest video in uh, in my Codices uh, YouTube series, and today uh, is an interesting one that I uh, I felt that was uh, came across that I felt that was really interesting. I'd like to share with everybody, and it is the ability to uh, communicate between a Codices PLC and a Control Logics Rockwell Automation Control Logics. And today we'll be using Ethernet IP for our um, our uh, network. And um, yeah, this this particular um, video is not going to be much about ladder logic, but it's going to be more about the connection between uh, the two PLCs. And of course, um, uh, the PLC that I'm using uh, today is uh, the one that I've been using throughout the videos is a Raspberry Pi, and uh, it could be the, although it could be any PLC, uh, it could be any uh, Ethernet IP enabled. Uh, PLC in the Codices family. All right, let's get going. We'll go and make a new project, and it'll just be a standard project, and I'll make it Codices. Code uh, PLC. It's going to be a standard project. Say OK, and uh, of course it's going to be a Raspberry Pi with ladder logic. Say OK, and then it'll make the project. Now, as I said, this particular project is less about ladder logic or programming, and it's more about the configuration, uh, the configuration itself. So let's take a look at how that, uh, how, how we actually do that. So we start off in the in the uh, CodeSys PLC by right clicking and adding a new device, and in this case, we're actually going to be adding an Ethernet adapter, Ethernet IP based adapter. And say OK, add the device, and it'll add it over on the left hand side, as you can see. From there, as long as I keep uh, the Ethernet module highlighted, it's going to allow me, it's going to show me what's available underneath that to, uh, to add, uh, uh, add as a child to the original parent Ethernet card. So that's the Ethernet card in my, in my uh, PLC, Codesys PLC, and then of course I'm going to add the adapter function, and then I'm going to add the inputs and outputs underneath that. So let's go and add the adapter. As you, as you can see, when I do that, it also adds the services. Uh, it adds a bunch of tasks for the services. Uh, and then from there, the last thing is I'm going to add the two modules, an input module and an output module. Now, this is all about transferring data between the two. Between the two. And, and in this case, I'm just going to keep it simple and just add, and just going to transmit one, one word either way. So it's a one word, 32-bit word, double word either way. And, and the reason why I chose that is the control logics itself, it's native, it's native size, the data size is 32 bits. So I figured I'd keep, keep it the same for them. Okay, so let's add a module. So I'm going to add the module and then uh, add a second module. So it's going to be my input and my output. Let me close that and then I'm going to go and reconfigure them all. So I'm going to start off by reconfiguring or configuring the... Um, the Ethernet module itself. So let's go into the properties. Let's sorry, double click and go into the properties of it. And what's interesting is you can go in. This is a setup of that Ethernet port, so it needs its IP address and subnet mask and everything. But but what what we can do is an easy way to actually fill this in is to go out and actually go out to, to your gateway and uh, set the gateway. Make sure you set the gateway of the Raspberry Pi in this case. And then once you do that, you can come back to your Ethernet card and you can select that from the list. You'll notice that I've selected the uh, ETH, ETH zero port of my Raspberry Pi. Say OK and, and um, that's my Raspberry Pi connection. From there, um, I'm going to then go and uh, configure the adapter. So double clicking on the adapter. Uh, the, the big thing in here is, is, as a matter of fact, there's no configuration for the adapter itself. It just kind of does its job. But what you want to pay attention to is the product code, major revision, and minor revision. And as a matter of fact, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to take advantage of this export EDS file. You can make a custom EDS file by, uh, by just pressing this button, and it'll go and create the EDS file that you're going to be able to import into your Rockwell Automation uh, in this case, it's RS Links. EDS files, electronic data sheets, are used to identify the hardware. 
and it's what gives it little icons, but also more importantly, it, it tells it all this information, the product code, the revision number, and so on. Okay, so it's, um, yeah, it's an identification code for the, uh, for the product. So we'll see that in a minute. Next thing is I'm going to go in and, and configure the, in, in, in the input module and the output module. As a matter of fact, I should have done this, I guess, in the beginning. So I'm going to go and rename these uh, Ethernet IP inputs. And then it's going to refactor what they call refactor it. And I'll go and change this one to outputs just to keep the names, just so the names are meaningful. It's going to refactor it, say OK, and it puts it in there. OK, let me let me go into the input card and actually set it up. A couple of things that are important here. The first thing is you have to you have to configure the size. So you have the ability to change all the different you, all the different sizes. You can go to all the all of the different sizes. And and in this case, we're going to be doing a double word. That's what we're going to be using. So I'm going to select double word input module. And, uh, and then go into the actual mapping of the I.O. This is the first time in our YouTube series that we've seen mapping. So the mapping, mapping of I.O. is done, whether it's done through words just like this that you want to transfer, transmit back and forth. But real I.O. can be mapped like this as well. So you can see when I open this up, it actually breaks it out into individual bits. So if you had real I.O. down the left-hand side, you'd also map that. You're basically connecting a tag to the real I.O. So let's connect our tag. Let's make our tag. I'm going to say ETH uh, IP underscore input inputs. See, good to go. I'm going to go into my output and do the same thing. We have to go in and make sure we select, in this case, D-word output. And then go and change the mapping. So ETH IP outputs, hit enter, and we're good to go. So now that is uh, that is uh, available for that is available for us to actually use, and uh, yeah. So let me go from there, and um, I'm going to create our program, our small program. There's not much to it. All we're really going to do here is we're going to move data from. Uh, in and out of the uh, of the PLC. So I'm going to use a move command and this will transmit data in and out of the uh, of internal uh, addresses. We can let this run every scan so we don't need to push button in front of it. And and we start off with the uh, with the Ethernet input. So I'm going to go and grab the Ethernet input and that is actually under the global uh, mapping area here. So I'm going to say Ethernet inputs. That's Ethernet inputs coming in, and let's place that that uh, data into my data in. It's going to make that tag. You'll notice it's going to default to double word. Good to go. I'm going to make another uh, network, and again, I'll use a move, but this time this is going to be used for our move out to the uh, out to the PLC, out to the control objects. Again, we don't need a push button. In this case, I'm going to go and take my outputs, so my Ethernet outputs there, and I'm going to, uh, uh, sorry, in Ethernet outputs is on the other side. So Ethernet outputs here, and I'm going to do my data out. So you, you can see, then before I go there, you'll notice that i got to change the data type here, D word, all right? Just make sure you do that so that this, the data type is correct. But you want to pay attention to this. So first of all, whenever you're in a PLC, whether it's CodeSys code or Control Logics or whatever, the ins and outs are always from the perspective of that particular PLC. So in this case, the things that are coming into this PLC, I'm mapping to my internal data. And in this case, I'm taking my internal data out and I'm mapping it to the what goes out of the PLC. So that's the way to keep that keep that straight when you're when you're creating this. Okay, let's save this project, and I'm going to log in and uh, and uh, I should be able to download this. It's going to compile it for me, and you know what? Just because I'm going to do another download, 
say full download and what's interesting with I, I already have I have already selected I've already put data I've already put a program in the control logics I'm going to show you how to do that but I've already done that and so you'll notice that this just started working it just started working. You'll notice on the left-hand side, the indicators show that this, these the green circles are telling you that this is actually good and it's actually running properly. Um, what actually happens when you download? If I stop this, what you should notice is that the green green light, the green circle is actually turned to gray, meaning they're not scanning. So you want to pay attention to that. So if we press play, you'll notice it's scanning again. You'll notice if you, if you have a problem where it's you've misconfigured or you're not communicating for some reason, you'll notice triangles on on here that indicate that hey, it can't it can't talk to the can't talk to the PLC. Okay, so this is in the code assist code assist PLC. Let me go back out here and uh, well, the first thing is to show you that um, for sure I have already loaded the EDS file into into my RS links. And uh, because of that, the EDS shows up. The device actually shows up inside RS links. The way to get that into your, uh, the EDS file into your links is to actually use an EDS hardware installation tool. Okay, when you use a hardware installation tool, and it's just taking a second to come up, my computer's acting a little slow. There it is there, you would say add and then register a single file, go out and find that file. Uh, in my case, that file is under, uh, uh, where is it, uh, OneDrive. I have everything in OneDrive and uh, should be in there somewhere. I, I have this file somewhere on my computer here. And, uh, and then you should be able to, there it is there. And then you just select it, say open, and it will install that EDS file for you. Okay, I already have that. I already have the EDS file and it's showing here underneath my Ethernet IP driver inside inside what Rockwell uses as a communications software called RS Links. Okay, so we know it's talking. Uh, so let me go out now and create my uh, RS Logix 5000 project, my RS Logix 5000 uh, file, and I'm going to select new. It's an L73. I'm using an older processor. It's a uh, older firmware, but it should work just fine with the newer, with the newer um, firmware. So, and I'll just say uh, CLX test. Let's call it CLX test. It's a seven-slot chassis, and I'm in slot two, or the processor's in slot two, and it's going to make the project inside that directory. Say OK, and it goes and creates it. Okay, so the big thing here is, again, as a matter of fact, in control logics, we're not going to actually have to do any ladder logic. So we won't even have to do a move command. In control logics, it's just tags. So that's okay. And, and it's partially because as well, uh, the code says PLC is acting as the adapter as opposed to acting as a scanner. So really, the control logics is acting as the Ethernet scanner at this point. So it's more or less the master of the system. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my Ethernet card to my control logics here. The Ethernet card that I have currently in this PLC is the, is the uh, EN2T. Okay, I'm going to say uh, OK to that from the list and go through the configuration. So my EN2T and the IP address is 192.168.2.253. It is in slot six, and of course the one I have is uh, it's an older firmware as well for the card, so it is four three and say okay, and uh, that's the configuration. Literally, that's all the configuration that I have to do for my Ethernet card. Just like we saw with the with the uh, code sys, uh, what I what I can do now is I add a child module underneath my Ethernet card. All right, here's where I add the Raspberry Pi or the CodeSys PLC. So communications, of course, Rockwell doesn't have that listed as part of their uh, devices that you can get. So instead, what we're going to actually use, what they do have something that's interesting. They have a generic Ethernet card. 
So uh, I'm going to find the generic Ethernet card, Ethernet module. There it is there. Expand this so you can see it. Generic Ethernet module. Say OK. And it allows me to put this put this out. So code sys uh, PLC, I'm going to call it. OK, and it's its address is 192.168.2.253. Uh, sorry, 254 is the Cosis PLC. The data size that I'm going to do is I, I'm going to make it real. I'm making it real simple, right? One word in, one word out, and uh, two words is used for the configuration. Okay, here's the magic. You have to use the CIP uh, codes that uh, for explicit messaging and and in this case the codes for the input output and config are 101 100 and 102 say okay and the last get gotcha that you've got to worry about here in in the Rockwell PLC is you got to turn off the unicast unicast connection over Ethernet what you want to do is do the multicast connection instead so you're disconnecting you're turning off the unicast but the RPI is fine. You can leave it there and say OK. And that should be uh, your configuration. All you have to do is download this to your control logics. And so I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm downloading this to my, to my control logics. There it is there. Download. And the giveaway here, just like in the Codices PLC, we saw the, the little green circles here in Control Logics. The giveaway is the fact that you don't have uh, a little error symbol on the Ethernet card down here, which is actually a little triangle. It's, it looks like a little yield sign with an exclamation mark in it. And of course, the IO OK light is good. So that's telling you that it's, it's IO over the network is actually good. It's functioning. So let's go into the tag database. This is where Rockwell has their tags. And what you can do is go in here and actually monitor the uh, monitor the data that's going in and out of the uh, PLC. Okay, so so in our case, we should have, let me go out to code sys. Uh, we see zero, zero. So I'm gonna say data out. I'm gonna put some data out. So one, two, three is my data out. And that should be going out to the control logics now. So if I go out to the control logics, let's see that. Yeah, one, two, three is coming in. Remember I said from the PLC's perspective, that's the input area, the input tag area. Here's the output tag area. So the output from output of control logics, I'm gonna put in uh, 987. And then you'll notice when I go to the, the code sys PLC, 987 is coming in as an input. There you go. That is how to transmit data uh, between uh, Control Logics and a uh, CodeSys PLC. Of course, it's only one word, one word either way. And you could expand this into a rage, you could expand this into all sorts of different types of data going back and forth. And uh, you could start controlling things and use you know, use this as a as an I/O block or, or, or whatever. And it, of, of course, if you use a Eaton or a Wago or or, or um, uh, any of the other um, CodeSys PLC manufacturers out there, you would uh, you'd be able to use their I/O blocks just in the same way as a as a remote I/O. Okay. Um, again, thanks for thanks for coming and watching this video. Uh, if you lasted this long, <laughs> and uh, hopefully uh, I can get you to like the video and share it if you could. And uh, I also have provided my email address. If there's anything I can do to help, please uh, drop me an email. Thanks again.